The Wolf Who Cried Boy, story by Bob Hartman, pictures by Tim Raglan. The Wolf Who Cried Boy. <coughs> Once upon a time, there lived a family of wolves. They stole sheep, ran after deer, and snacked on muskrat and squirrel. Except for Little Wolf, that is, who never stopped complaining about what his mother prepared each night for dinner. Lamburgers again, he whined. I hate lamburgers. Sloppy doughs, he howled. We had sloppy doughs last night. Chocolate mousse, he whimpered. Chocolate mousse makes me sick, and besides, it looks just like... That's enough, barked Father Wolf. But it never did any good, for all Little Wolf wanted to eat was... Boy! Why can't we have boy tonight? We never have boy anymore. Well, son, sighed Father Wolf, there was a time when a clever wolf could snatch a shepherd boy off a hill or pluck a farm boy out of a field. Why, there was nothing better than a steaming plate of boy chops, a big baked potato, and some boysenberry pie. But boys are hard to come by these days, so stop your complaining and finish off that moose. Yes, father, little wolf muttered. Then he asked, but suppose I did find a boy someday. Father Wolf smiled. You find a boy out there in the woods and your mother and I will be happy to catch him and cook him for you. But I wouldn't get my hopes up if I were you. <coughs> the next day, as Little Wolf made his way home from school, he sniffed the air. <laughs> pig salad he moaned i hate three pig salad and then little wolf remembered what his father had told him about catching a boy someday so he decided to play a little trick and put off that awful dinner for a while he ran home just as fast as he could howling all the way boy boy i've just seen a boy in the woods if we hurry we can catch him Father and Mother Wolf raced out of the cave. They ran through the woods to the top of the hill and all the way down to the creek. They peered into the trees and sniffed behind rocks and looked into every hollow log. But they could not find the boy. We looked everywhere, panted Father Wolf. Everywhere a boy might go. But we just couldn't find him. Better luck next time, son. Little Wolf tried to look disappointed, but it was all he could do to keep from laughing. The joke got even better when his mother announced, Oh no, the three pig salad is ruined. The bricks are limp, the straw is damp, and the sticks have turned all... Sticky. Don't worry, dear, Father Wolf said. We can make do with snack food tonight. And so they crunched on chipmunks and dip, and Little Wolf was happy. So happy, in fact, that he decided to try the same trick the very next day. It's the boy! He cried, I saw him again. He's just at the edge of the woods. So once again, father and mother wolf went racing after the boy. Once again, they came dragging home, their paws empty. And once again, their dinner was ruined. Just look at that Granny Smith pie, mother wolf sighed. The apples are entirely too mushy. Yep agreed Father Wolf, and Granny's gone all crusty and hard. Hmm, 
Looks like snacks again tonight, Little Wolf shrugged. But the smile on his face made Father Wolf wonder. And then he heard his son a little later on the phone. <coughs> That's right, Little Wolf whispered. I didn't have to eat dinner tonight either. I think I'll tell them there is a boy out there tomorrow too. Father Wolf went straight to Mother Wolf and they agreed that on the following night they would ignore his silly tricks. The next day, Little Wolf made his way home from school as usual. He could smell the awful odor of hot, steaming muskratatouille as it floated out of the cave and was just about to holler, boy, when the most amazing thing happened. There, walking through the woods before him were more boys than he had ever seen. Boy, he cried, boy, but no one came running from the cave. Boy, he howled, boys, but still no one came. So he ran into the cave shouting, there are boys out there, dozens of them, big ones and little ones, fat ones and skinny ones, enough to fill our freezer and auntie's freezer too. But his mother just shrugged and said, oh, that's very nice, dear, but I already have our supper planned. And Father Wolf hid his face behind the newspaper. And that's when one of the boys stuck his head in the cave. He was the mischievous type, a lot like Little Wolf, in fact. And he had crept away from his scout pack to have a closer look. See, Little Wolf shouted, there's one of them now. But even though the boy tiptoed right into the cave, Little Wolf couldn't get anyone to look. There's a boy on the couch, he howled. That's enough now, son, said his mother. You're not fooling us again, added his father from behind the paper. We're on to your little tricks. But I'm not lying this time, honest, Little Wolf pleaded. There really is a boy right here in our cave. The boy glanced at his watch, then turned to leave. Look, please look, Little Wolf begged. He's getting away. But by the time Father Wolf finally stuck his head up above the paper, the boy was gone. You waited too long cried Little Wolf. He was here a minute ago. All we have to do is run outside. We will do no such thing, growled Father Wolf. From now on, you will eat your dinner without complaining, and you will stop your fibbing once and for all, said his mother. Do you understand? Okay, Little Wolf sighed. So from then on, Little Wolf ate Lamburgers and three pig salad and even grew fond of Granny Smith pie. And he never, ever cried boy again. And that's why the boys at least lived happily ever after.